Let's generate a red cardinal on a branch. How did this image generator know to show a bird? How did it know the bird was red and was on a branch? How did it even know what a branch looks like? This is a complex system that runs millions upon millions of precise matrix calculations to produce what seems like magic. To really get a good idea of how this happens, we have to first understand how AI models understand human language, to then understand how it will generate imagery. So what is an LLM? An LLM, or a large language model, is a type of artificial intelligence trained to understand and generate human language. Tools like ChatGPT, Claude, and Google Gemini are examples of LLMs, or large language models. I'll be using ChatGPT throughout the course, which is also one of the most popular LLMs out there. They're called large because they're trained on massive amounts of text, everything from books, articles, and websites to online conversations and more. The goal? To learn how humans communicate. Our sentence structure, grammar, tone, style, and even intent. So the AI can respond in a way that feels natural and useful. So why do LLMs matter to designers like us and other creatives? Because LLMs are more than just writing assistants. Here's a few ways in how they can help our design workflows. First of all, idea generation. Need a concept, a slogan, or a campaign direction? Just ask. Copywriting. LLMs can help draft social media posts, taglines, product descriptions, and more. Creative briefs. You can get help structuring or editing client-facing documents. Naming. Generate brand names, product names, project titles, everything based on tone and keywords. But more than just that, learning about how LLMs work allows us to understand the all-important tool for designers in the next decade, the image and video generation tools we'll be using throughout the course. So in the course, we'll focus on two types of AI models. The first one is the one we just mentioned, the Large Language Model, or LLM, and that's eventually fed into another system, which is called the image diffusion model. And the image diffusion model is what helps us generate images from text. For example, it can recognize that apple relates to fruit without being explicitly taught that connection. This ability to interpret language is essential for image generation tools, which we'll explore throughout the course. Before an AI can create a visual of a dog barking, it must first understand what a dog is and what it means to bark. So the large language model learns and understands and generates human language by analyzing massive amounts of text and finding connection points between them. And then it's fed prompts into an image diffusion model, which generates images guided by patterns it learned during training. It often relies on an LLM to first understand and interpret the text prompt converting it into meaningful tokens that will guide the visual generation process. Now let's talk about how LLMs work. Think of it like a supercharged autocomplete that does not only finish your sentences, but can write essays, answer questions, design prompts, and even help with branding and copywriting. At their core, LLMs are probability machines. When you ask a question, they calculate which words are most likely to come next based on everything they've learned. For example, it's like a seasoned designer who's so used to trends, client needs, and layouts, they can almost guess what the client wants next, even before the client even tells them, because they've done it over and over and over again. The next is generating tokens and context. So LLMs don't see a whole sentence. They break them into little chunks called tokens. Words, part of the words, or even punctuation matters. Even the period at the end is its individual token. They then look at the context, the text around it, to figure out what's likely to come next. And then next, there's several layers and processes it's run through. LLMs have millions or even billions of neurons, mathematical units that process language in layers. Each layer refines the understanding of meaning, just like a creative review process. So let's go through that process in more detail. So let's have an example prompt. In this example, it's create an image of a furry dog. So it's gonna divide each word into tokens. So create would be its own separate token and image of a barking dog. Occasionally it'll divide a word. So barking could be bark and then ing. 
and also periods count as tokens as well. So each word or token is given a vector point. LLMs don't understand words the way humans do. Instead, they represent words as vectors, which are like long lists of numbers, sometimes 12,000 long. These numbers capture the position of a word in a massive invisible space called the embedding space, or vector space. Each word becomes a point in the space, where similar words are placed close together. In our prompt example, the word dog and barking would be close together in this map because they were frequently shown associated together during the training by the data. This example uses a 2D space, but AI models have 50,000 words to map out, so there's not a lot of room. So what it does is it maps everything out in a 3D vector space. This is why each token, or word, is assigned a long list of numbers, as these pinpoint the exact location on a 3D vector map. These columns of numbers are coordinates that allows words to find each other and therefore develop associations in human language with each other. Imagine a giant 3D cloud, except it's actually thousands of dimensions large in this space. Similar meanings equal closer together. So king is close to queen, and Paris is close to France, and designer is near other words like creative and visual and artistic. Different meanings are farther apart. So king is far from apple because king and apple don't appear together very much in human text and language. Light, brightness, is a different area from light, weight, depending on context. This map of meaning is built during training, as the model learns how words appear in context. LLMs don't understand words in isolation. Instead, they consider the tokens around them. So for example, the designer used light colors in the layout. Here, light is interpreted as brightness because of nearby tokens, color, and layout. But the backpack is very light and easy to carry. Now, light means not heavy, thanks to the context words like backpack and carry. The model dynamically adjusts its understanding based on context, and it does this through a mechanism called attention. So let's talk about attention. Unlike older models that process each word independently, attention, which is part of a bigger transform layer, which we'll get to, is another process that is run that lets the model look at all the other words in the sentence and ask, which of these should I pay attention to in order to understand what this word means? It gives the model the ability to weigh words differently depending on their relevance to the word it's generating or analyzing. It's like a designer reviewing an entire mood board before making a decision about a single layout element. Because meaning often depends on context. For example, the word bank can mean very different things. She sat by the bank at the river. The attention function highlights the word river. He made a deposit at the bank. Attention now highlights the word deposit. The model uses attention to focus on the words that clarify which meaning is correct. And then the data after attention flows through lots of other different processing layers. And a lot of these are different mathematical matrices calculations that you're seeing all behind the scenes that are happening millions and millions of times. So the next thing is the feed forward neural network. So after attention, each token's updated vector on that little 3D map I showed you now is enriched with more context. It's passing through a small neural network called the feed forward layer. This network applies a mathematical transformation to the vector. It doesn't mix tokens with each other. Each token is processed independently here. Think of it as a refinement step that helps distill more meaningful patterns from the attendant information. It's polishing it up, it's adjusting and fine tuning and enhancing it before it's passed on. I wanted to take a moment and pause. This is a very complicated mathematical process with lots of layers that are processing data over and over. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand how they work. I just wanted to show you the little bit of a detailed guide of how they go through the processes, but you in no means need to memorize this or know this front and back. It just helps us later on when we write prompts to know what's really going on behind the scenes with how it's processing our words. So the next step is residual connections, skip connections. This is to make sure the model doesn't forget the original information. It uses residual connections. 
These are like little shortcuts that add the original input vector back into the output of each layer. It prevents the model from overwriting useful inf information with too many transformations. So it's kind of like editing a design, but keeping the original version as a backup layer in Photoshop. Once again, you don't need to know the mathematics behind all this. Just know that this is a very complex process that happens and why AI sometimes seems like magic. There's lots of checks and balances that happen to make sure um, what it's coming out with is, is checked and reviewed. Another layer is called layer normalization, and this is a cleanup step. It helps stabilize the training and keeps the data consistent across layers. It ensures the model doesn't get too biased with extreme values. For example, it's like adjusting levels on a photo to even out the lighting before moving on to the next edit. So we're stacking more and more layers of processing. And transformers don't just do this at once, they repeat this whole process multiple times, 12, 24, or even 96 times depending on the model size. It's going to go through the attention, it's going to go through the feed forward neural network, the residual connections, the layer normalization, and it repeats over and over. So each layer builds a more nuanced understanding of human language. So lower layers, understanding structure like grammar and punctuation, the middle layers, recognizing meaning and relationship, and some of those higher la layers of processing that are later on help with reasoning, uh, planning, and completing tasks. So for example, it's like going from sketch to refined illustration to full brand identity. And we have a final output. After going through all the layers, the final vector is used to predict the next token for text generation, a token meaning word, classify something like a sentiment or a topic, or guide image generation like in a diffusion model we'll talk about next. We just scratched the surface of how LL models work, but if you really want to get way more technical and dive into the mathematics, of course not required at all for this course, uh, you can check out 3Blue, 1Brown on YouTube. This is how I first learned the details and, of AI models, and I found him a really, really good teacher. So we saw this complex weave of processing. The vectors representing words pass through many layers of data processing. Eventually, they reach a probability matrix where the model determines which word is most likely to come out next. While the underlying math is complex, what you really need to understand is just how deeply layered this process is. Each word is broken down, analyzed, cross-checked against each other through multiple internal checks and balances. The result feels almost magical, like the machine truly understands and interprets human language. This same kind of layered intelligence is what powers image generation as well, through a process called diffusion, which we'll explore in the next lesson. Make sure to download the PDF resource that goes over everything we talked about in this lesson.